Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon's Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose. Good morning, Greater Rose of Sharon. You know, Pastor Emeritus Blood always say, it's all right to leave this world if you got somewhere to go. Yep. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Come on, Greater Rose, put your hands together. Please put your hands together. Amen again. Amen. Amen. If you're excited about being in the house of the Lord, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We had a blessed week all week. Amen. We, we had a busy week all week. And the Lord allowed us to make it to the house of prayer. So since we're here, we might as well give God our best praise. Amen. 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 Church, amen. amen. Pastor asked me this morning to read the Great Commission, and I kind of jumped up too early. <laughs> but I just tell you, uh, I'm just eager this morning. Uh, let us stay all over the building. But uh, I'm just eager this morning. I missed last week due to work, and... Uh, God wants us to be eager for him this morning. When I think about all of the things that he's done for me in my life, I just be eager to tell God thank you. When I think about why he, how he protects me while I'm out on that dangerous highway, I'd be eager to get to the house of the Lord to tell you, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for one more day, Lord. And I just thought about to tell you this morning, God wants us to be eager to tell people about his goodness this morning. Because he is worthy to be praised. Our, our great commission this morning comes from the 28th chapter of Matthew, verses 19 and 20. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, 
and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Tell somebody this week coming up how good God is. Amen. Sunday after a while. Listen, the things that we are going through in this life, no matter how difficult they may be, they're all temporary. If you look back over your life, you've gone through some major storms. But there was a day 
where you came out of. <laughs> you had some peace, you, you had some good fortune, and here come another storm. <laughs> well, that lasted for a little while, and then you came out of it. Somebody ought to be, be able to say man by now. <laughs> Yeah, you've you gone through a storm, you came out of it, you go through a storm, you came out of it. But listen, there is coming a day where all the storms will have passed. And as the male chorus said, every day will be like Sunday. Well, we'll, we, we'll be able to worship him all throughout the day, spending eternity praising and lifting up his holy name. You ought to be excited about it. Amen. Amen. There's a day we're not going to have to deal with sickness. We're not going to have to deal with the cares and concerns of this world. Because as believers, we have eternity in view. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. Those of us who, those of we all stand in the need of prayer. Amen. And those of you who desire, you may come around the altar this morning. And this morning as we come, uh, let us be praying for uh, our own brothers and sisters in the Fort Ice community uh, uh, following the mass shooting. Uh, Arkansas made national news, and it wasn't for a good thing. Uh, so we want to be praying for uh, Fort Ice. Uh, you know, you never know where trouble will happen. Uh, so we want to be in prayer for that community. Uh, we know there are things happening all over the world, uh, too much for us to name, but we know that God is in control of all things. Uh, so whatever your cares or your concerns are on this day, uh, there's no better place for them uh, than at the feet of the Master. So this morning we want to be praying for those who are less fortunate than we are. We know we are in an election, we are in an election season. We want to be praying for uh, the White House. Uh, and we, as believers, we know that regardless of who uh, sits in the Oval Office, we know who sits in the, the eternal office. So as believers, however it all unfolds, we know that God is the one that's in control. Amen? Amen. So this morning, uh, Deacon Temple is going to be our prayer warrior. Amen. And I'm, I'm going to ask y'all if y'all fix this circle. Y'all fix it. Y'all fix this circle. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's touch and agree. Amen. 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 Once again, cast your cares on him because we know that he cares for us. Amen. Good morning, church. Just remind us, whatever and regardless to whatever our condition says, it's already getting better. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Most holy, most holy, everlasting to everlasting, creator and sustainer, thy give and take of life. Dear Lord, we come this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, looking to the hill from which cometh our help, realizing all of our help comes from above. Lord, we call on you because we know that you are able. You are able to do anything but fail. And Lord, we look unto you right now, Heavenly Father. We come, Heavenly Father, member, many members but one body. Lord, I ask that you would just bless us right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we know that you are a doctor who never lost a patient. Heavenly Father, you're a lawyer who's never lost a case. But then, Master, we know that you're able to do all things. And then, Master, one day, you, the Jesus' disciples told you can do these things if you have faith. Master, we look to you right now to meet our needs. Lord, we ask that you are blessed right now. Lord, some come for one thing and some come for another. But whatever the problem may be, Lord, you'll be able to fix it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I trust you. I believe you. I love you. 
Heavenly Father, I ask that you would continue to bless us one by one and then bless us all together. Lord, strengthen us, Heavenly Father, that we may be able to do your will. You said in your word that we must go out into all nations, preaching and teaching, Heavenly Father, the good news. And Heavenly Father, I come right now repeating the good news to you that you're able to do anything but fail. Lord God, I know that you're a doctor over cancer. You're a doctor over diabetes. Heavenly Father, I know that you're a heart fixer, a mind regulator. Lord, no medicine can do what you can do. The woman with this, your blood, Lord, she traveled from city to city. Heavenly Father, but just one little touch, Heavenly Father, made her whole. Lord, we ask right now that you would continue to bless us. Bless this church of greater roles, Lord. Bless all the churches open up in your name. For Heavenly Father, we fall short of your glory. And we just ask that you would continue to, Heavenly Father, look beyond all our faults. Because you have supplied our every need. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would just once more and again meet the needs of your people, Lord God. Go into the hospitals, Heavenly Father. Bless my family, Heavenly Father, lying on the sick bed. Heavenly Father, bless my friends and family in the confinement and rehabilitation facilities, Lord God. And then, Lord, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But, Lord, we ask that you would be that bridge over troubled water. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, for the things we may have said, seen, and done, not pleasing in your sight. Heavenly Father, we can carry on. And Heavenly Father, one of these old days, Heavenly Father, one of these old days, Heavenly Father, one of these old days, yours to call and ours to answer, Lord God. But Heavenly Father, we know if we continue to trust you, Lord, everything is going to be all right in thy sight. Lord, Heavenly Father, I ask you once more to bless this church. Bless our pastor. Continue to bless him with more wisdom and knowledge. Crown his head to the soul of his feet. Bless the first family. Bless the, my prayer brother and bless all the preachers. Deacons, choir members, urchins on the door, everyone in their respective places. Teachers, preachers, Heavenly Father, give us that heart, that love that runs from heart to heart and breath to breath. And we may have a smile on our face because someone may come through that door say, what must I do? Lord, we ask that you would bless our mind and bless our spirit and give them a testimony. And we testify unto them truthfully, Lord, you will win the case in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you and we thank you right now in advance for the things that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we pray love, peace, and joy. Amen and thank God.
love and tomorrow. Don't give it away. Amen. We thank God for all of our visitors today and those who may be tuning in via uh, Facebook Live for the first time. You could have worshipped anywhere in town, but you chose to worship here at Greater Rose of Sharon. So we thank God for you on today. Amen. Sister Cameron, did you have anything else? Thank you, everybody, for coming and enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. Listen, uh, I want to say praise the Lord for a blessed vacation Bible school this past week. Amen. To all of our instructors uh, and those students that came out, it was a blessing. Um, we've had a decent number each night. Amen. We praise God for all of the uh, staff that work behind the scenes to help uh, make this vacation Bible school a success. So thank God for all of you. Listen, uh, whenever we can come together and share the goodness of Jesus Christ, we didn't have anyone to accept Christ, but that's okay. We plant a seed, and at some point, the Holy Spirit would touch somebody's heart. So we did our part. We came out. We had a blessed time, and to all of you who contributed in any capacity, we praise the Lord for you. Amen. Amen. Once again, we still have our cereal drive going. Uh, for those of you who can, if you want to purchase cereal or you want to donate, uh, we'll be doing that to the end of the month. We want to help our students, amen, who are relying on school to have breakfast. Well, school is out, so we want to do our part to help those who are less fortunate than we are. 
Amen. This time we're going to move a little higher in the service, and that is worshiping through giving. Amen. Come on, y'all ought to sound a little more excited about giving. Amen. Amen. This time we're going to ask if everyone would please stand and begin to follow the direction of the ushers from the rear. What time is it? It's giving time. God gave his son, his son gave his life, that we may have a right to the tree of life. God gave so much, and he asked us for so little, just a dime out of a dollar. So won't you give? Won't you be obedient to the word? He said in his word, if you give the way he asked you to give, he will open up the doors of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Now, if you wish to give to this great ministry, simply download the Givelify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create your account. Enter the place of worship, Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Givelify app, you can mail all your tithes, offering, or any donation to Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas. Zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. All your tithes, all your offering, all your donations are tax deductible. Until the next time, this is Deacon Duffy saying, give your best and be blessed. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I didn't have no money. Yes, sir. A lot of my friends, ooh, thought that was funny. See, Dickens. But I'm so glad today, glad today, I can stand right here and say, that the Lord, he's been good, sure been good to me, Lord. Lord, From a poor family, we didn't have much, but the Lord been good to me. I come from a poor family, we didn't have much, but the Lord been good to me. Let me tell y'all something. I didn't have no money. A lot of my friends thought that was funny. But I'm so glad today I can stand right here and say that the Lord been good to me. Let me tell y'all this. We was raised in a shack, y'all. Sometime clothed within that was put on our back. Mommy and daddy, they done the best they could. They always told me Son, always be good. But out of all the things, hey, 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 I know that the Lord been good to me. Oh, he been good. He's been good. How many of y'all know he's he been, been good to me? He's been good. He's been good. He been good. He been good to me. Did he bring he's you? Been good. 
Did it bring you? Did it bring you? A mighty long way. Oh, Lord. I've been sick. How y'all been sick? Then God bring you. He healed my body. He blessed me, y'all. There was time in my life when I got a nickel. I had to stand down. How many know that God got power? How many know that God got power? He blessed me, y'all. He blessed me, y'all. He, he blessed me, y'all. How many know he's a rock? Rock in the weary land. How many you know he's bread? Bread in the starving land. Bread in the storm. I wonder, can I get one with this? I wonder, can I get one with I wonder, can I get one with I don't mean to be nosy. Yeah. I don't mean to be nosy. Yeah. Have it been good to you? 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 Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. If you know that he's been good to you, you ought to let the Lord know by telling him thank you. He woke us up this morning. As I often say, someone laid down last night and made plans to be here this morning but God called him home so we ought to be thankful come on give God a hand clap of praise because he's worthy he's worthy of all praise <laughs> let us pray father we come now in Jesus name we thank you we praise you we bless your name Lord because you are worthy of all praise master we ask you for forgiveness of our sins and shortcomings Lord Father, we thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the songs. We thank you for the praise. But Lord, if men, women, boys, and girls are going to be saved, the gospel must be preached. So Lord God, I pray that you would touch the hearts of your people on today. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would sit me down while you stand up, speak to me and through me, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your word to fall on good ground on this day, and if there be a sin in the midst, they come seeking salvation. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we bless your name, because you are worthy of all praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. We give thanks to God the Father, his Son, who is Jesus the Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, our comfort and our teacher. I'm sure you would agree with me. When I say that, it is good to be here. Hey, Amen. We thank God for our male chorus today. Hey, Amen. Blessing us through song. Come on, praise God for the male chorus. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. This morning's message uh, is going to, I'm going to kind of lay it out kind of in a Bible study type of form. Uh, I'm going to need you to lean in this morning because this is a message that's going to help every soul in the building. Uh, so I want to call your attention to uh, Luke chapter 11, and I want to look at verses 1 through 4. Luke 11, verses 1 
through 4. Luke chapter 11, and we're just going to deal with the first four verses. Luke 11, verse 1 through 4, if you have it, say amen. Amen. And it reads, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I want to talk this morning from the subject, learning how to pray. Learning how to pray. To pray. Let's all say amen. amen. Now typically when we uh, recite what we call the Lord's Prayer, we're typically uh, reciting Matthew's version. Uh, we, don't, we don't really recite the Lord's Prayer uh, the way Luke does in this 11th chapter. And the reason it's important to take a look at this, brothers and sisters, is because one of the first prayers we learned was the Lord's Prayer. And if you're not careful, you will find yourself simply just reciting it, almost like lyrics to a song. You just recite the Lord's Prayer, and you can probably ask any person in the room to recite the Lord's Prayer and they know it. But how often have you taken the time to break down what Jesus was teaching his disciples through this model prayer? Now, when we we look at it, we have typically over the years called this the Lord's Prayer. Well, this is actually a model prayer because keep in mind, the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. And when he was, was asked this question, we see it right here in verse number one. It says, and it, came, and it came to pass that as he was praying, don't miss that part because it says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place. So the disciples, keep in mind, they've been with Christ all through his earthly ministry. So in the text this morning, verse 1, it says, as he was praying. The disciples are watching, listening, and learning While Jesus prays. Let's not miss that. Because here they are. They've followed Christ. They've witnessed all of the miracles. They've heard all the sermons up to this point. And Jesus often went to himself to pray. So let me just pause briefly and just share with everyone. And you've heard this any time there's preaching or teaching concerning Jesus in prayer. If Jesus had to pray, if Jesus chose to pray, then you and I most definitely need to spend time in prayer. It says, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, it says when he ceased, one of his disciples, and it doesn't tell us which one, And it says, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us 
to pray. Now think about it. They've been following Christ. They've been right there with Jesus. And after hearing him pray, they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Now, now I'm, I'm thinking back to the old church when, when I was young and, and those old deacons would be up front. And th th those, old, those old deacons could pray. You know, nothing against young deacons, but, but them old deacons could pray. And, and, and when, when you were young and you would hear these men pray, and then there were mothers that could pray. And they would pray, and it would seem like Jesus just walked in the room when they were praying. So if you can picture Jesus praying and his disciples listening. Now, we remember how the old deacon and how the mother prayed it and the effect it had on us. Here the disciples are. They are listening to Jesus pray. And one of them says, Lord. Teach us how to pray. And brothers and sisters, the one thing that will help you throughout your entire life is if you learn how to pray. It's, it's all right to read the scripture. It's all right to study the Bible. It's all right to attend service. It's all right to serve in the different capacities, but there isn't any ministry that can be effective without prayer. And one of the most important spiritual disciplines is prayer. Prayer is foundational to Christianity. There isn't any part of ministry that can thrive without prayer. And Jesus is the divine teacher of prayer. Not only is he the teacher, but but he sets the example. See, Jesus spent time in prayer. And there, there are examples to show uh, how Jesus often turned to prayer uh, during certain events in his life. When, when Jesus, uh, in his baptism in Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22, during his baptism by John the Baptist, Jesus prays and the Holy Spirit descended upon him. In the wilderness, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, after his baptism, the Bible says that he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And Jesus spent time praying and fasting. In solitude, like I mentioned, Jesus would often get off to himself. Mark chapter 1, verse 35, Luke 5 and 16, Jesus would withdraw away from his disciples and spend quiet time alone with him and the Father in prayer. Jesus prayed before he chose his disciples. Jesus spent, time, spent the whole night in prayer before God. One that we're probably most familiar with is when he was in the garden prior to going to the cross. Jesus spent time in the garden praying, asking God, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. He prayed before he fed the multitude. He prayed before raising Lazarus from the grave. But the most familiar and probably profound prayer is when Jesus was on the cross and Jesus prayed for those who crucified him. Listen. Jesus gives us the example that whatever we are faced with in life that we ought to approach it prayerfully. There is nothing too large or too small to take before the Lord in prayer. And to the young people in the room, it's very important that you learn how to pray. Because as a young Christian, the enemy will try to trick you, trap you. He will try to run all types of tricks to get you off track. But if you know how to pray, 
when you find yourself dealing with temptation, and this isn't just for the young folk, when you find yourself dealing with temptation, the Lord will give you the strength that you need to overcome. Let's, let's, look, at what, let's look at what the text is. Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Notice what Jesus, how he enters into this teaching moment. And he said unto them, when ye pray. So we can deal with those three words. When ye pray. Not if you pray. He says, when you pray. Because keep in mind, they asked him, teach Teach us how to pray. So Jesus says, when you pray, he says, our Father, which art in heaven. So the reason, we, once again, we want to look at this because we've been reciting this prayer as long as we've been in church. But, but how often have we taken the time to really break this down and see how Jesus is teaching his disciples. He says, our Father, which are in heaven. The first thing he does is recognize his deity. Yeah. Our Father. Meaning that he is the heavenly Father. He, he, is, he is the Father. He, he's Daddy. He, he is the one in control of all things. He is our Father. And he says, which are in heaven. The Father in heaven, thank God for our earthly Father, but, but we're talking about our heavenly Father. And he says, which are in heaven. He's in that holy place, that heavenly place, uh, the place we've read about, the place we desire to one day spend eternity. Our Father, which are in heaven. And here we look at his, his deity. We look at his presence, where he dwells. And Christ, as he is teaching his disciples, he wants them to acknowledge and recognize who the Father is. When it comes down to our prayers, that listen, in this day and age in which we live, there are a lot of people that are doing some praying. But everybody's not praying to the heavenly Father. We just can't assume. Watch this now because here's the thing. A lot of people are saying the name God. Y'all remember Kirk Franklin said it years ago in one of his songs. He, he says a lot of people are praying and using the name God, but don't nobody want to use the name Jesus. Well, the fact of the matter is, whatever the religion is, they're praying to God whoever their God is. But for Christians, we believe in the God of the Bible. <laughs> we believe in our Father which are in heaven. And, and before Jesus goes any further with his disciples, he wants to make sure, listen, you recognize the Father for who he is. You don't want to just pray to any Father. You want to pray to the true God of the Bible. And then he says, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now as a young person, as often as I repeated the Lord's Prayer, I had been saying this for a long time before I even knew what hallowed meant. That word hallowed means holy. It, it, it means that we are in awe and in reverence of him. It says, our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, holy is your name. And when we can identify that his name is holy. Y'all have heard it said. It says, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. If, if, you, if you really think about it, his, since his name is holy, I want you to think about something. Uh, that, that was that time you were driving on the freeway. And that 18 wheeler started to, to merge over in your lane. 
And all of a sudden, you just say, Jesus. And then he got back in his lane. See, y'all y'all missed that. that. That just went over everybody's head. Listen, there was that time you were in trouble and didn't know how you were going to make it. And you said, Jesus. And, and then all of a sudden, something happened. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So, so, some people don't, don't, don't recognize or don't, it. It's just another name to some. But when you say the name Jesus, or, or so, so, some, something starts happening. And you, when you call on him, he will always answer. Hallowed be thy name. His, his name is holy. And see, these disciples seeing, seeing Jesus praying inspires them to learn more about this spiritual discipline. And brothers and sisters, we don't want to be in church with access to the power and not know how to access it. Every one of us as believers, why? everyone's not going to pastor, everyone is not going to preach, everyone is not going to teach, but we all have the privilege, we have access to the throne of grace through prayer. You are not too young as a Christian to go to God in prayer. You can be five years old. And if you know how to call on Jesus, just know he hears you. You may have to learn a little more detail concerning prayer. That's why we're going to go through this this morning. But if, if you know how to call on the name of Jesus, trust me, God can meet you right where you are. And for those who don't like to pray in public. Well, that's fine. There are some things that you will, uh, in time, God will he'll work on you as far as praying and leading the prayer meeting or leading uh, in the altar call. He'll, he'll work on you in that. But, but when it comes down to your private time, every believer ought to spend private time talking to God. And once we learn how to pray, that means you can sit and have a conversation with the Lord. Matter of fact, there was a time I was going through something heavy. And I sat, I, I got on my knees and I was praying. And he and I had got to talking so long, I just, I just got off my knees, just turned around and sat down on the floor. I started out on my knees and just sat down and just started talking to God. And, and posture doesn't mean a thing, Okay. In reverence, yes, we, we get on our knees. But for those that are not physically able to get on their knees, you can sit down and pray. <laughs> those those, those who, who, listen, if you, if you don't feel like sitting down and praying, you can walk and talk to them and, and pray. Listen, you don't have to be on your knees. You don't have to sit down. You, you don't have to walk. You can be on your way to the job, going down the freeway and talk to God. Listen, posture is not uh, a prerequisite when it comes down to prayer. Our spiritual posture, meaning that we submit and surrender to him in our prayer. That means whatever it is you are dealing with, you can go to God and talk to him about it. Now, here's the thing. You can't go to your best friend with all your business. You can't go to a, a childhood acquaintance. You can't go to a classmate. Y'all want to know the truth? You can't tell your spouse everything. We say stuff, oh, we talk about everything. No, you don't. All right? No, you don't. There, there, there are some things you cannot tell anyone but God. And, that's the, and the great thing about that is that the Lord is not going to be, be displeased with you about the things that you share with him. The creator... The creator knows the creature. The, the, the creator knows the creature. So that thing you're dealing with, he already know about. Y'all hear me say it when I talk about that thing? You know, everybody got that thing? Guess what? The Lord knows what your thing is. 
And, and the thing is, if you want help, we're going to get to the, to the deliverance part here. We're going we're gonna to get to it. But when you go to him with your problem, and you know what? We got some, we got some problems. We got some, we got some real problems. And, and the thing is, you see how we look today on Sunday? We're dressed nice. We show up to the Lord's house. We come to praise God, and we say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? We got some stuff going on. That's just real talk. And I don't mind saying that because I don't want anybody to think that the little, that issue you have that you isolated on a on an island all by yourself. No, the person sitting on the pew with you, they got a problem too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got one. You know what? Your pastor got a problem too. Matter of fact, your pastor, your pastor got a few problems. So, so you need to pray for your pastor. <laughs> and and the truth of the matter is. Every one of us, mm -hmm. because Paul reminded us in the third chapter of Romans that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But when we take our concerns to him, we, we're talking about learning how to pray. When we take our concerns to him, the Lord has a way of working on us on the inside while he is working on the outside disciples the disciples were going to be left with the responsibility of going forward with ministry when Christ went back to the father so he had to to let them teach them how to pray because they were going to be faced with challenges you and I are faced with challenges but when we are faced with these challenges we can take everything to the Lord in prayer. It says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Now one thing, as we're praying for God to work out situations out here on earth, we ought to be also praying, Thy kingdom come. We've been reciting it, we've been reciting it over the years, but the truth of the matter is, we ought to be praying that the Lord comes. See, we, we didn't think about it then because we were just reciting it. But the truth of the matter is, it says, thy kingdom come. We ought to be praying for the Lord's return. Matter of fact, I'm going to take you to the last verse in the last book, in the last chapter of the Bible. And it says in Revelation last, last verse of the Bible. Some, some, some of y'all already know. Revelation chapter 22 verse number let me look at verse number read down for verse 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Verse 20. I said the last verse. I'm looking at verse 20. He says, He which testifies these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. But then it's the last part of verse 20 says, even so, come Lord Jesus. Some of us have never looked at that verse. John is saying, Christ says, surely I come quickly. But John's response to that is, come Lord Jesus. How often, now, now think about it. How often do you pray and you're praying and asking the Lord to come? We're praying, we, we, we're praying for health, we're praying for houses, we're praying for promotions, we're praying for finances, we're praying for these things, but how often do we pray thy kingdom come? See, we've been, we've been reciting it. We've been reciting it. And as Jesus was teaching his disciples, he tells them that they ought to pray 
thy kingdom come. So in our prayer, as we want a better life and the best thing that we can receive in this life, our best life now, we're praying for that. But the disciples, when they asked, Lord, teach us how to pray, Jesus said, we ought to pray, thy kingdom come. So that means that we, as believers, ought to be living every day with expectancy. Yes. Say that again. Yes, sir. Just know there isn't anything preventing Christ from coming back today. Sometimes we think these things are, are in the distant future. Oh, that's, that's going to happen one day. Listen, ain't nothing stopping him. Ain't nothing stopping him from coming right now. I'm, I can see the clock in the back. It said 11.15. Jesus could be here by 11.20. And we can all be gone. You see, nobody said hallelujah right then. See, <laughs> that made you nervous. Come on. Listen, listen, he could come at any time. And we need to be ready for when he comes. Now notice, we're still in the model prayer. He says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. And it is a good practice, church, whenever we're praying, and I'm not trying to cover the whole Bible, there are other verses we could reference, but whenever we are praying, whenever you pour your heart out to God, you're explaining to him everything you're dealing with, all your problems and concerns, we should always include in our prayer, just as Jesus says in the, in the example that he's teaching his disciples, he says, thy will be done. As in heaven, so on earth. Because in heaven, his will is being done. In heaven, they obey the Lord. The angels rejoice. They, they praise him from eternity to eternity. And in the earth, he says, our prayer should be that God's will be done. Yes, yes, Whatever you're dealing with in your personal life, it's all right to cast all your cares on him. By all means, talk to the Lord about everything happening in your life. But before you say amen, you should say to the Lord, your will be done. He don't mind you sharing your concerns with him. You need some money, ask them for it. You need a job, ask them for it. You got somebody in your life worrying your nerves, talk, talk to them about it. But ultimately, you just let the Lord know. Let your will be done. That is our way of saying, Lord, however you choose to work the situation out, I'm fine. When we say, thy will be done, I've shared with you several times, when I prayed for my mom. Well, it was my desire for mama to come out to the nursing home, but God worked it out another way when she passed away. Well, she's no longer in the nursing home. Okay? She, she, she's spending eternity with the father. So I, why be upset with that? Yeah, yeah, I miss mama, but she's gone to be with the Lord. So God did it his way. And just know, y'all, when it comes down to your prayer, God's going to answer it according to his plan. Now, sometimes what you desire lines up with his plan. And, when, when, and those are the times you definitely ought to shout is when you've been praying, you really wanted God to work it out this way, and he worked it out that way. Oh, that's, that's showing up a reason to shout. Once again, those, those of you who've been listening, and I've been talking about your prayer journal, when you're, when you're writing in your prayer journal, and if God worked that thing out just the way you thought he would or wanted him to, if there's ever a time that you shouted and said, thank you, Jesus, that ought to be the time right there. Because, see, he don't have to do it our way. But if he does, I'm not telling you how to rejoice. Some folks will run, some folks shout, some just lift holy hands. But whatever you do, you make sure you tell the Lord thank you. Amen. Now, it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. We ought to be praying as believers because we know prayer works. We know prayer changes things, so we ought to be praying 
for his will to be done on earth. That is why when we come to intercessory prayer, we're, we're interceding for others. We're praying about the war overseas. We're praying about the shooting in Fordyce. We're praying about uh, the, the killing and the violence here in the South End. We're praying for these things. Why? Because we know God is able, and we are praying in faith. We're praying in faith. We're praying in faith. We're praying in faith. Y'all going to get it in a minute. We're praying in faith. Even though it doesn't look like things going to turn around, we're praying in faith that God will do it for us. And, and just know that faith is the key component to your prayers being answered. God is not obligated to do something for you to convince you to start believing. I'm going to say that again. God does not have to do something for you to convince you that he's able. He doesn't have to do it for you to prove that he's able. If you are operating from a position of faith, you don't need to know how things are going to turn out. You just trust that God will do it and you move from a position of faith. Those of you who didn't make it to the uh, vacation Bible school, we learned about the three Hebrew boys. And they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, they said, King, O oh King, listen, we don't need another uh, chance to talk about this matter. It says the God that we serve will deliver us from your hand. But they knew deep down inside, watch this, that even if he did not do it, they know he's able. And church, you ought, to, you ought to be excited about the fact that God is able. You see, it wouldn't do it. Listen, what's the point in praying if God's not able? If, if you only think God is able to take care of the little things, then you're not going to go to him about the large things. But if you know God is able to do all things but fail, you and listen, some things, it doesn't, watch this, faith goes beyond logic. I said faith goes beyond logic. You see, when you're in the hospital in all of the doctors and all of their education, the specialists, you know, you got a general practitioner, but then you got the specialist coming in. And, and when they look at you and say, well, we, we, we just don't know what's going to happen. Well, see, that's when faith take over. It, it, it doesn't matter what the doctors say. When you are moving from a position of faith, every doctor can walk in and turn around and walk out. But when you have faith in God, God can heal. God can deliver, and if you trust him, now, whether he does it the way you want him to do it or not, we know he's able. You see, that's why we continue to praise and worship God the way we do, because we know he's able. Matter of fact, let me just give you just, just a real practical illustration. If you need five dollars, you're only going to ask somebody that you think will give you five dollars. You're not going to ask the person who ain't got five dollars. <laughs> you're going to only you're going to only call on the one who you think can deliver. So if we believe God is able to deliver, I'm I'm not just talking about the small stuff. God is bigger than cancer. God is bigger than diabetes. God is bigger than heart problems. God is bigger than dementia. God is bigger than Alzheimer's. God is bigger than high blood pressure. God is bigger than wayward children. God is bigger than, than, than a, a, a rocky marriage. God is bigger than wars and rumors of wars. God is bigger than crime and violence. And when we pray in faith knowing that he is able, how he chooses to do it is totally up to him. But while he is working things out, we walk by faith 
and not by sight. Listen, we're trusting that God is able to do it. And here's the thing, and I hope somebody's getting this, because regardless of what you're dealing with, once again, faith is greater than logic. Because we look at situations, and we, we, we'll look at it, and we'll be like, you know, it, I, I just don't see how, how that's going to turn around. So, somebody been on drugs for years. And everybody in the family then wrote them off. Because they've been hooked so long. But just know, God have delivered folks from addiction that they stronghold they've been under for a long time. Listen, listen. I, I had a friend, a, a neighborhood friend, and and I had been in ministry for a while at this time. And I knew this brother. Every time I saw this brother, he was drunk. Every time. Hey. And when, when I saw I ran into him one day. And it still brings me to tears. Well, I think about him. Because this brother was all the way out there. And one day, I was walking into a convenience store. And I looked. And, you know, we try not to stare at folks. You know. But I was looking. I looked at this brother. And I'm thinking to myself, because it's been years since I saw him. And I looked. Like, man, it looked like, I was like, mm, that can't be him, because every time I see, he always messed up. But then I looked and looked and looked. And then I got the nerve to just go up to him. I say, hey, what's going on, man? He looked. He said, what's, he said, what's going on, little bro? He was a lot older. I said, and I looked him up and down. I said, man, <laughs> man, what happened? He said, man. He said, one day I got tired, man. He said, man, and then I, I talked to the Lord. And once I gave it over to the Lord, he said, man, the Lord changed me. Boy, I started shouting in the gas station parking lot. because I'm seeing, I know where this brother was. I'm not talking about something I heard, but I saw it. And then I looked at him. Now, keep in mind, I accepted my call to ministry, been, in, been preaching for a while, talking about God is able. Yes, but then when I saw that, yes, it, it just reassured my faith that God can deliver anyone from whatever it is they're dealing with. Listen, God is able. The three Hebrew boys said he was able. Now, we're going to get through this. I'm trying. I'm trying hard to get through this. <laughs> Verse number three says, give us day by day our daily bread. Mm -hmm. Once again, the disciples are asking the Lord to teach them how to pray. When he talks about give us day by day our daily bread, when you're young, you're thinking that this is a prayer that we're asking the Lord to provide us with food. But the truth of the matter is, Daily provision is more than food. We're asking him, give us this day, day by day, our daily bread. Not, not only a, a, a physical food, but spiritual food. Give us what we need to endure the spiritual warfare. Don't you know the Bible tells us that his mercies are renewed daily. So in this prayer... We ask the Lord, give us day by day our daily bread. Lord, in other words, we're saying, Lord, sustain me for today. Yes, Think about the Old Testament. When the Lord provided manna. And the manna was only good for one day. One day. Yes, they could not store it up. They couldn't put any in the cabinet, in the freezer. Because it would turn to maggots. Yeah. That was the Lord's way of letting us know. Yes, he will provide our daily bread. Yes, he, he, he allowed the manna to come. And he was so kind that if you had one child. Yes, he provided enough manna for you, your spouse, and your one child. Yes, but if you had six of them. Yes. The Lord provided enough manna 
for you, your spouse, and all six of them. <laughs> and there was enough given for everyone, and there was no need to try to put anything up. Because that's his way of teaching us and letting us know that he will provide our daily provisions. Now, here's the thing. Every day don't have the same need. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that one. Every day don't have the same need. And God will provide. All we have to do is trust him. It says right here, give us day by day our daily bread. Verse 4, and we're getting ready to get out of here. It says, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Verse number 4, listen, the, the, the A part of this verse, we better get this. We better get this. It says, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. See, we might need to jump over to Matthew's gospel. When the Lord says, if you want to be forgiven, then you must forgive. See, while we're mad, while we're holding grudges, while we're indifferent, while we, 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 we still, you know, we, we, we upset with somebody over something that happened two years, five years, 20 years ago, you're still holding on to that. The Lord says, if you want to be forgiven, you must forgive. He didn't even ask what they did to you. And we didn't have some hard situations. I wouldn't dare say that you haven't really and truly been hurt deeply on the inside. But the text says, if you want to be forgiven, then even that person, you're going to have to forgive them. And there are folks who need to surrender before the Lord about that hard heart. Because, see, we get a, it's kind of like the women that wear makeup. The makeup enhances your appearance. But at some point, you're going to take it off. And, and, and the real you is there. In church, we put on makeup. Y'all missed that. On church, on, on Sunday morning, we put on makeup. But see, God knows what we look like without all of the dress up. And, it, and listen, it's very possible. It's very possible to shout, jump, Sing, pray, and do what we do on Sunday morning and still have a hard heart. It's very possible. I could go a little further with that, but I'm not even going to do that. Because no. here's the thing. The true you will always come out. Let, let me just say it that way. The, the, the true you. I didn't have some meetings. Deacon, some of y'all were in the room. The true you will always come out. And brothers and sisters, God is telling us if we want to be forgiven, we must forgive. It says, and forgive us our sins. When we're learning to pray, we should always repent of our sins. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We're asking God in our prayer, Lord, lead us not into temptation. In other words, Lord, protect us from ourselves. See how quiet you got right there? When we find ourselves facing temptation, and we all face it, we are asking the Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, here's the thing. Here's the part I don't want you to miss. Since we're talking about learning how to pray, we've gone through the model prayer. 
but treat each portion of what we have just looked at. And I'll break it down. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our sins. Lead us not into, to, into to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Treat each one of those as, your, as a category for you to break down what's going on in your life. You need to spend some time with our Father which are in heaven. And whatever that means to you while you're learning to pray, that's what you say and talk to him about. Yes, Amen. Hallowed be thy name. We've discussed what hallowed means. That means holy. So when you are in your private place and you're praying, however hallowed be thy name speaks to your heart, you need to include that in your prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. However that resonates with you, that needs to be a part of your prayer. See, this goes beyond just reciting it. And praise God from Big Mama Nim, uh, uh, the pastor, the youth director, the Sunday school teacher that were teaching us the Lord's Prayer. Thank God for them. Praise God for it. But now that we are a little older, there's more to the Lord's model prayer than just reciting it. It's got to get personal now. Yes, sir. You break it down. Yes, sir. And when you go through these and treat it like a category that you, can, that you can talk to him about, don't you know your prayer might be just one part of this? You might spend your whole time in verse 4. Lord, forgive us our sins. Yes, sir. Yeah. See, yes, sir. some of us, we got some stuff that, well, we didn't already discuss it. Everybody got things. Mm -hmm. But see, we got some stuff that keep worrying us. We, we're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, but yet we still got that thing. Mm -hmm. But just know God is able. Mm -hmm. He's able to deliver you mm -hmm. from even those things. Mm -hmm. Now, parents, if you got young people, listen, it's all right to teach them the model prayer. But you got to keep in mind, let's not miss what we looked at in verse 1. The disciples heard Jesus pray. I gave the illustration as a young boy how I heard them old deacons and mothers pray. Mom and daddy, you need to let your children get involved in the prayer. You can pray as a family. Or you need to, if you just pray over them, if you believe in prayer, Prayer ought to be a part of your Christian home. Because if you want the enemy to stay on the outside of the house, there needs to be prayer on the inside of the house. And church, when we learn how to pray, even, even preachers, deacons, mothers, spiritual leaders in church, listen, we need to make sure we know how to pray. Some people, if something goes on in the, fam in the family, something going on, a pastor's phone will ring. And pastor, something such, such, such going on, we want you to pray for us. I ain't got no problem praying for you. But listen, you're a child of God, you can pray for yourself. Right now. I, listen, my, my prayer isn't more powerful than yours. Because the Bible says that the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous avail is much. So, yes, I'm going to pray for you. But it doesn't mean that your prayer isn't strong enough. Listen, if you call on Jesus, we didn't, we didn't already talked about that part. If you call on Jesus, the Lord will hear and answer your prayer. We should be praying by faith. And faith is the key factor to all of our prayer. Prayer should come from a heart Love for God and the love for people. And if we truly believe God is able, we can bless his name when we go down in prayer. There's nothing too large or too small to go and take before the Lord. You don't have to be an eloquent speaker to go before the Lord. And I'm going to give you something here that's, that's really going to make you shout. You didn't heard this before. 
But even when you can't seem to figure it out, the Holy Spirit will make intercessions for us with groanings that are not able to be uttered. So that means that when you've had that time where you went to your prayer place and some of y'all were there just like this. Yep, y'all know we do this. We really stretch out. And, and you can't think of what to say. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will intercede for us. So there is absolutely no time that we cannot reach God in prayer. So those times when we, we just can't seem to get the words together, the Holy Spirit makes intercessions. And if we truly believe God is able, listen, that's why I told you earlier, I said, I need y'all to lean in today. Because everybody in here got something that's heavy that you're dealing with. But whatever it is, you need to take it to God in prayer. And just believe that he will hear and answer your prayer. I'm not in a position to say how he's going to answer or when he's going to answer. But I believe by faith that when you call on the name of Jesus, and, and like Big Mama say, when you call him and you call him right, the Lord will answer your prayer. Some greater roles. Don't let Satan trick you into bypassing your prayer time. Don't let Satan uh, trick you into being so busy that you don't have time to pray. Young people, don't think you're too young to pray. Whatever we take before the Lord in due time, if you give him time, God will hear and answer prayer. If you believe it, why don't you give the Lord a can clap of praise? <laughs> Master, we come now to close of this sermon on today, Lord, where you taught your disciples how to pray. Lord, we are your modern day disciples. We are learners of you. We are followers of you. And Lord, we're asking you right now, Lord, to teach us how to pray. Amen. Lord God, for that person who is just skeptical, skeptical about prayer, wondering if prayer works, some is facing a situation and they're wondering what's the use. Father God, touch hearts right now. And let us all have the faith to understand that regardless of what things look like, Lord, you are able to do all things but fail. Lord, we pray for that sinner, man, woman, boy, girl who isn't saved. We pray that you would touch their hearts with strong conviction and let them know, Father God, they stand in need of a Savior. Lord, for that carnal-minded Christian who's living worldly and, and doing all types of things that do not align with your word. We pray that you would convict their hearts, Father. And then, Father God, we pray for that believer who is doing the best they can, Father. We pray that you would continue to give them strength to run on, Father God. Lord, we know you're able to do all things but fail. And, Father, we pray that you would just perform a miracle right now, Lord God. And we're believing by faith that your will will be done. Lord, we thank you for all you've done, doing, and will do. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 There may be one here this morning who has never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. There may be one here who you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit and you know it's time to surrender your life over to the Lord. You know it's time to get right with God. You may be 
You may already be saved, but you, you just stand in need of a savior. You know, you stand in need for uh, uh, rededication. Uh, whatever the situation may be, listen, as we're standing all over the building, don't put off until tomorrow what you can do right now. All the Lord wants you to do is come.